before we have time for our message, I'd like to pray with John Guillando and with Carol Harwood. So it's a great pleasure to pray for them. And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a joy when we see that there's so many people willing to serve Amen. in our church. Uh, we had to, to vote. You weren't here. <laughs> and you were elected. And, uh, and uh, we had to vote three times because we had too many people. And according to our rules, we need to get to more than 50% in order to be elected. So more than 50% of our members voted both in you and you, which is great. And uh, so let's all stand and make a great prayer. And we want just to, to bless you. And so I'm going to ask the pastors to come and going to lay hands on you and just to bless you. Lord, we want to thank you for our new deacons. And I pray, Lord, and anoint their hands for service, Lord. And Lord, I anoint their foreheads for wisdom. And I pray, Lord, that their hearts will be steady and, Lord, firm in you, God. And that you give them the wisdom, Lord, and the, and the, the, the words and the, the gifts of your Holy Spirit to help us to lead this church into victory, Lord. Bless, them, bless their families. And I thank you, Lord, for their availability, for being available to serve, Lord. We bless them and their families, and we are grateful for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give a hand to the Lord. So I'll start today by uh, teaching uh, about this subject, and I call it Good Vibrations. I wanted to have the Beach Boys music, uh, Good Vibrations, but maybe some people will be offended. I won't, uh, because, you know, everything that was created in this world belongs to the Lord. Even the things that were not created by God belong to Him. The gold and the silver, everything belongs to Him. So in what regards me, everything that exists on earth belongs to our God. So we could even play that music, but I'm not going to do it, but I want to tell you that in this world, we need to learn how to feel the presence of God. This is something that happens when we receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. We need to have the Holy Spirit in our lives in order to understand who God is. People can explain you who, who is God, what God does, history about God and about the Bible, but you will never have an encounter with God without receiving the presence of God in you, the Holy Spirit. And God wants to give us His Holy Spirit, His presence. Suddenly we are conscious of the presence of God. There's something good that is happening. And before I was a Christian, I, uh, and some of you maybe use this uh, expression, I used to feel some good vibes about some things and bad vibes about other things. What is this, a good vibration and bad vibration? It's language of the world. It's, it's kind of a sense that people have about things, about people, and they have this sense, and God created us with feelings and with the emotions. And uh, as we were created by God with these feelings and these emotions, we could feel good feelings about something, and then we had a red light about something else. But I want to tell you, the Holy Spirit is not a feeling, the Holy Spirit is a person. After you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you can ask God for the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit is in you, it's more than just a good feeling or a good vibe or a bad vibe. Now you have God Himself showing you what you should do, what you should abstain from doing. You have red lights about sin. You will know you cannot sin, but you also have something called discernment. God will show and reveal to you certain things that are unexplainable. It's very hard to explain these things to someone that doesn't live with God's presence on a daily basis. Now, in Isaiah 29, verse 13, the Lord says, These people worship me with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And their worship of me is based on rules made by humans. This is the God's Word translation. So there are people, there are churches that have a lot of people, sometimes very fancy, you know, big temples, things that are awesome, that are beautiful in our eyes, but God is not there. God is not there. And I'm telling you, when we have the Holy Spirit in us, I know when God is present and when He left the house. And we can do things that sound God. And as Christians, sometimes good Christians, they just leave God to the side and they start
start to build their rules and regulations. And their rules and regulations are sometimes more important than God himself. You know, I, I love the new generation. I'm part of the new generation. I don't care if I was born in the 60s. I feel like I was born in the 90s. Because I decided that I want to be in this world not as a spectator, but as an actor. Someone that takes action. And when you take action with things, you don't grow old. You grow old in the flesh, but not in the spirit. But things that people that grow old in the spirit, they live by rule and regulation, and they neglect the spirit. They talk about the spirit, but they don't manifest the spirit. We should manifest God's glory in everything we do. Can I hear an amen? amen. Now, in order to understand spiritual things, we learned this uh, last week, we need to become like children. We need to be childlike, but not childish. Hello? It's different. Jesus said you need to be like children. You need to be like children. So this is a rule. But we shouldn't become childish. That's two different things. And we're going to talk about it today. So a religious spirit causes people to become childish. They're more, more concerned about their rules than about God's word. And then the work of God is not being done. And then we see that there's a generation passing and God is not acting. But let me tell you, if you love a spirit-filled church, why don't you start by praying, speaking in tongues, manifesting God's glory. I, hear, I, I listen to people complaining that we should have prophecies in our meetings. Why don't you start yourself by giving those prophecies? Why are you waiting for others? Because you see, God is searching the earth. And He's searching your heart right now. And He wants to use us as Christians to manifest His glory, to be like Jesus. Now, Jesus was a different kind of person than sometimes we think. And my first point, I want to mention aggressive preaching. Aggressive preaching. Now, Jesus and John the Baptist, they were extreme preachers. They had a very aggressive and sometimes insulting way of preaching. You know, the amount of pejorative words and politically incorrect words they used, it's unbelievable as we read the Bible. So when the religious leaders came to meet John by the river Jordan, he will call them, you snakes! Wow! <laughs> Who told you to flee from the wrath to come? He was very, very insulting. Actually, he, his looks were insulting. Because he dressed weird, he had, you know, a, a different way of dressing, and he's dying. Man, he's dying. He ate grasshoppers. <laughs> he, he ate bugs. That was his diet. He was a weird man. And he came out of the desert. Weird man. And he would call them all sorts of names. But you know what? The presence of God was there. And they, they realized we need to repent. And they were baptized by John. Now, would you think that Jesus will come uh, preaching in a different way? But Jesus actually was really aggressive. Look at this in Matthew chapter 23, verse 27. International Standard Version it says, How terrible it will be for you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs that look beautiful on the outside, but inside are full of dead people's bones and every kind of impurities. Wow, this is Jesus' church. I guess they were pretty offended because they tried to kill him and stone him numerous times. They, they couldn't do it, but he had aggressive preaching. Guess what? Certain times, God needs to offend you so you can wake up. I heard the name. Because <laughs> the other said, I don't want to be offended. I'm not here in the church to be offended. I'm not here to offend you. But certain times, when the message of holiness is preached, you will feel offended. You will feel offended, especially if you are in sin. There's two reactions you can have. One, if you're a sinner, you'll say, I need repentance. 
But if you're a religious person, you'll be offended with a messenger. Ouch. I'm stepping in some toes. But listen, Jesus, who is our model, Jesus, who should be the model for every preacher, he didn't stop at thinking, what, what will they think about these words? He called them by their names. And this word, hypocrites, thank you so much for the introduction for my message. <laughs> this word is in the mouths of people. And this term, hypocrisis, which is a Greek word that gave them the English word, uh, was used in theater and with the idea of, of, of play acting. So it's, it's the idea of a mask. What's a hypocrite? It's a person that is playing what he isn't. Do we have Christians that speak Christianese? <laughs> they carry a Bible. They look like Christians for what they wear. But in fact, they're like tombs full of death on the inside. And then instead of spreading love and gospel, they, they try to spread religion. Religion is not a bad thing when it's for real. But when I'm using the word religion, I'm talking about an appearance of good on the outside. The word religion in modern churches is used to describe the condition of hypocritical state in which some people are that they cannot receive more from God because they think they know it all. But we don't know it all, folks. We need to be humble. The word of the Lord today is not the same word that He spoke 10 years ago. It's different. It's renewed. It's fresh. And as we heard today, youth and the new generation, they know how to distinguish from fake and real. Look at this bag over there that you can buy in Canal Street <laughs> or Montreal downtown. You can buy a Louis Vuitton bag and it looks like a Louis Vuitton, but if you're really expert in Louis Vuitton, you look and say, that's a knockoff. That's, a, that's fake. That's so fake. My God, that's really fake. <laughs> <laughs> it's like those people that, 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 you know, they're so proud of themselves and they put their glasses and the Bluetooth thing on their, on their ear and they don't need the Bluetooth for anything. But it makes them look like a business person. <laughs> so you go to the mall and here they are with the Bluetooth thing. And they enter Tim Hortons and say, I'm a big shot because I have a Bluetooth thing in my, in my ear. You know, it's, it's all about looks. And they buy the fake t-shirt and the fake everything. And they're fake. We can do that in the world, no problem. If you do it, that's up with you. I'm not criticizing your way of life. Don't be offended with this. But I want to use this example to talk about spiritual things. You know, first time I went to a church, I hated it. You know why? Because the preacher was plastic. He was not human. He couldn't be. He was so fake. So fake. You know, even the way they were doing prayers. Oh, God. Stuff like this. And I, I thought, who are these people? <laughs> who speaks like this? Do I need to do that voice so God can, can listen to me? And then I went to another church, and it was another kind of circus. And I thought, this is really weird. But God saved me. You know what? In spite of all that stuff, God saved me. Amen. God saved me. But I, I want to tell you, I'm a missionary too. We talked about missions. I'm a missionary. And for eight years, actually, I was on the list of PAC missionaries with the difference that I never received one penny from missions. So I was, I was on the list, but never paid as a missionary. Because I have another view of missions. I think like this, if God called me to Canada, He will provide. That's the way I see it. Maybe some people don't see it this way. 
So I, I, I was planting churches in Toronto, and in order to pay for my TV show, wow, you had a TV show? Yeah. <laughs> I had a TV show on, on uh, now it's another name, it was CH at the time, and in order to pay for the TV show, I was a janitor. So myself and my wife, we were cleaning offices and uh, throwing out the, the, the garbage and all these things to pay for the TV show. So I didn't wait for missions in Holland or wherever in Europe to send me money. I'm not going inside the missionaries, God bless the missionaries. Some can do in some way. We all have different ways of think, seeing things. In my way of seeing things, God called me to a place He would provide for me. He always did. <coughs> but in order to have this attitude, you need to be sure that God called you to that place. That it's not just a feeling. And when you know that, you know that, you know it's called faith. And faith is a powerful thing. That's what I'm talking about. Faith. Now, these people that came to Jesus, they were fakes. They wanted to show they had faith because they dressed like Pharisees. They washed their hands like Pharisees. They paid their tithe. They did all these things. But they hated Jesus. Why? Because Jesus was different. Jesus was very different from them. Now, let me uh, show this parable. <laughs> And I can name a parable of graphs. I, actually, I, I read this awesome uh, message by, uh, by a very famous preacher, and he named it the parable of, of graphs. And, and so let, let us just uh, read the parable of graphs. Jesus is talking to this world. Here's his message. But what shall I like in this generation? Who is he talking about? People that are there. Okay? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to their companions and saying, We played the flute for you and you did not dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We roared to you and you did not lament. For John came, neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, uh, drinking and they say, Look, a good blood and the wine, uh, uh, neither a friend of tax collectors and sinners, but wisdom is justified by her children. So here's Jesus giving the parable of brats. Those are, those are not the, ch the childlike people that he was talking when he said, you need to become like children. So you see the difference? It's not that Jesus is against children, but this talks about you know, Jewish culture, and people were rejecting both John and him for different reasons. And he, here's the analogy that he has and I like to talk about this analogy. On verse 17, they were expecting Jesus to dance to their tune. <laughs> so, Jesus is saying, you like little kids that are playing a song, and you want me to dance to your tune, to your song. When Jesus is talking about dancing to the sound of the flute, it's a reference of what happened in ancient days with children that played flute, in a very special occasion they had, the wedding. So he's talking about these children, weddings were a long ceremony, they lasted for a whole week. And during the, the wedding period, they had children playing flute down the street, people were dancing, people were having so, uh, happy. So this is an analogy. And Jesus had a very uh, aggressive way of preaching. And people were offended because he was he wasn't dancing to their tune. By other words, it seems that Jesus didn't like their music. Now, listen, I would be honored if I could play the guitar for Jesus, if he would just listen to me. <laughs> Talk about having dancing, you know. You understand? They wanted him to go a little bit further. They wanted him to appreciate them so much. There's a dance in Jesus. That was hard to find on the internet. No. And then he said, We warned to you and you did not uh, uh, lament or you did not, uh, you did not cry. And to expect others to mourn and to cry for our needs, isn't that selfish? You know, I have some bad thing happening to me sometimes. Do you, do you have bad things happen to you? So you don't, you don't count to someone. You don't count to someone. And they, they start joking about it, you get upset, right? <laughs> or you, you tell your wife that you're 
feeling bad about something or your husband, and you say, okay, honey, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> and, and <laughs> it's tough. It's tough when, the, when you're in one of those days that you feel miserable, and you want someone to feel miserable with you. <laughs> it can be very pleasant with people, but it's very selfish. And the Pharisees, we have this act added, and Jesus, by other words, he was, he was telling him, stop being childish. Grow up, guys. Grow up. That's, that's kid stuff. You know, we cried, and we did not mourn. We played the, the music, and we did not dance. I like to see a dance in Jesus. You know? I guess, I guess he danced too. Yes. Not to their tune, though. <laughs> but he danced to the tune of the Spirit. Now this said, uh, this is talking about wedding music and funeral music. I don't know how many DJs in the house, but um, I know a few songs for weddings. And uh, the one that I hate more is when they put Kenny G on weddings. Oh, that's Jesus. They put, you know, but they, they, they have these songs for weddings. Or when someone told me, oh, in my wedding I want to play the Titanic music. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> that had a bad ending, the guy died! <laughs> <laughs> but when he came, people were playing the Titanic music. Can you imagine that? Wedding music. So selling beyond is great for weddings. So Quebec can be proud. We have lots of wedding songs. What about funeral songs? Do you know any good funeral songs? Besides an uh, amazing race and stuff that Christians start using in funerals. <laughs> you know, I guess wedding songs are better than funeral songs. Why am I talking about this? Now, what is your style? What is your style of music? Do you want Jesus to dance to your music? By other words, you would say, Jesus, I need this now! Like that stupid that I need money and I need it now. You know, it, you cannot act like that to Jesus. You cannot demand things from Jesus. You cannot expect Jesus to dance to your song. Hello? And when you cry, you think it's because you cry a lot that God's going to answer to your prayer? It's because, you know, all your makeup is coming down. <laughs> And you lock yourself in the washroom, it's more for ladies, and they cry and all the makeup, and when they look at the mirror, ah! <laughs> they cry even more. <laughs> I look off. Oh. What is your kind of music? And people reject the gospel. Listen, the message is this, the parable of brats. People reject the, the messenger, but in fact it's not the messenger they're rejecting. It's God. We send him the message. John the Baptist came to prepare the way for Jesus Christ. He had a tough message. It was really tough, right on, very aggressive. Here comes Jesus, and when you, you watch Hollywood movies about Jesus, they all miss it. Because some is like a stiff necked Jesus. He comes out, out, of, out of the woods and says, And this I tell to you, thou shalt not do this. And others, they show Jesus looks like effeminate, it's like more girlish style. I think they miss it. But in the Gospel, we see Jesus sometimes being tremendously aggressive. It's even shocking. So shocking one day he was preaching, everybody left. <laughs> everybody left. Never happened to me yet. <laughs> I've seen two or three people leaving sometimes because, uh, you know, and uh, I see them whoosh, it goes one, there goes, goes another one. Because <laughs> people get offended. People get offended. It's not the messenger, it's the message that is bothering them. Are you bothered by the message? If you are, I have good news for you, God loves you so much that He brought you here so you can hear a message that bothers you. <laughs> One year ago, up to my calendar, March, end of March, 2011, I preached a message here in the church, according to our theme, one body, many members, and I was preaching on 1 Corinthians, 
and I said this. I'm going to say it again. If you come to this church, if you're not happy with the church, if you don't like the preaching, don't feel it's the church for you, you should pray and look for another church. It's been one year that I said this. One year. I've never repeated it in one year. Never. And all my messages are unedited on the internet for anyone to listen. But there's people that come to this church that told me, Pastor, every Sunday you preach saying that people should go to another church. And I said, really? So all my messages, 52, are on the internet. Go there and tell me which one. And guess what? None. And I'm telling you, there is a spirit that brings condemnation if you're under religious oppression. Mm -hmm. And you need to be set free and you can be set free today. Yes. It's a deceiving spirit that makes you hear what is not said. Yes. 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 It never happened to you, you're in an argument with someone. Mm -hmm. And two days later they come to you and they say, you said this and you never said it. Yes. Yes. It never happened to you? Yes. Yes. You know that happens also in church? Yes. It can happen. So, one year up to the day, I said this and I repeat. And why am I saying this? Because I'm allowed to. <laughs> I'm the pastor. I'm allowed to, to wish you the best. I wish the best for everyone. So if someone is uncomfortable, you know, first they should come to me and say, Pastor, I'm really uncomfortable with what you said. Great. But if you don't come to me and you start saying, the pastor every week sends people away, that's a big lie, and if you're saying this, you're a big liar, and I'm saying from the pulpit that you need to repent and consider this. Don't be offended with the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. God is here to minister to our lives. Yes. Amen. Are you whining? I don't like the message. I don't like the songs. I prefer this. I don't like that. Well, if you have these complaints and you're serving the Lord in the power of the Holy Spirit, bringing people to church, bringing others to Jesus, you're allowed to say it. But if you come here just to see what's going on and then complain, listen, you're the same category of the Pharisees. You're a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. <coughs> hypocrite. Because you show like a Christian, you talk like a Christian, but you're not a Christian. Because a Christian is someone like Jesus. It's not someone that knows about Jesus. Now this said, Jesus was so aggressive, and, he, and then he, he told them something, that they, they needed to come out of that situation. It's like being on a hole, and if you want to bring someone out of a hole, it's a very aggressive thing. It's a very aggressive thing to do. And so talking about these things in Matthew 11, 12, he said, And from the day of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the violence taken by force. That's what I'm doing today. This is a very pretty violent passage. Does it look like if you have nothing, you know, that condemns you, but if, if you feel condemned by this message, I'm telling you, you should consider your ways. Consider your ways. Because God called us to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Not to be offended, but, in, but to be loving. And Jesus, of course, he was a loving person. But he was a very aggressive preacher. And when he says the violence shall take it by force, it's because it requires a certain degree of verbal violence in order to convey a message that will change people. Listen, if I see a person in misery, like I see some of the, the folks that are coming to our food bank, my greatest joy is to start to see them coming to church. And thank God, many of you that are here came through share. Now, I will be doing a poor job if I'll tell Pastor Bernard, give them just food. That will be a poor job. Because we don't want you to get food. We want you to change your life around. We want you to be a businessman. We want you to find a job. We want you to be successful. To get married. To buy a house. To have a full life. That's what we want you to do. That's what we Because if you come and say, here, now you need to learn the Lord's Prayer. If you don't learn the Lord's Prayer next week, no food. <laughs> Is this the music that we play? Jesus was a preacher filled with the Holy Ghost and fire! Yes. In Louisiana they say fire! <laughs> Full of the Holy Ghost! 
And because he was full of the Holy Ghost, his aggressive preaching would draw many people away, the religious, but the ones that had a conviction of sin, they were following Jesus. And this upset them so much, that's why the religious people killed Jesus. And they will kill him again today. I wonder if Jesus entered physically in our churches, not just South Shore, but in any church, how will he feel? Will he be ignored? Sat, sitting at the back and nobody went there to shake his hand because he had a weird looking hair or something? I don't know. Oh, who is this guy? How are you? Oh, my name is Jesus. Oh, nice name. What about if he calls Jesus himself? Will you honor him? Will you crucify him? What is your style of music? So let, let me go to my, to my to this point. What is your style of music? And when I say your style of music, you know, it's so easy to attack a, a, a preacher or a church, and some people are so offended by the message of the gospel. So we, we cannot be just offended. There's a time also in place to have that, those kind of messages, though, know, hell and brimstone and all these messages. Some people will get really offended. You know, people get offended by mes the message of prosperity. Personally, I don't know how to preach another message. There's people that say, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in prosperity. I do. Yeah. I do. I, I don't believe God called everyone to be rich, but I, I believe that in the promises of God in His Word, that when I walk with God, I prosper. Yes. I learn how to be generous. I know how to live with little, and I live, know how to live with much. Amen. I've learned all things, but God wants to prosper me, and He wants to prosper you. Amen. If you don't believe it, that's up with you. Amen. But if you're offended by this message, hello, we have a problem. And the problem, it's not the pastor. And if you're constantly living church services with the feeling that the message was directed at you, this is probably a good thing. This is probably a very good thing because God loves you. God loves us so much. And He loves you so much that you can know it and you're here and what you need to do is separate yourself from the world, walk with Him and say, God, I need your Holy Spirit. Lord, I really need your Holy Spirit. If you come to church and don't feel the presence of God, maybe the problem is not the church, it's you. If you walk into a place and you feel demonic oppression, maybe the problem is not with the place, it's with you. And this one, please don't say amen, because it's very sad when Christians have to walk under oppression. Last point, what is your style of fellowship? John or Jesus? Now, John the Baptist was a loner. He associated that with no people. He was alone, went to the desert, came out of the desert, preached the message, went back to the desert. He was kind of a loner. He, uh, and Jesus, on the contrary, was associated with everybody. Because John associated with nobody, they said he was demonic. And because Jesus associated with sinners, they said he's a gluten and a drunk. <clears throat> so, this is what preachers, like me and some of the pastors here, have to endure. <laughs> That's, that happens. I'm not offended if you think that I'm this or I'm that. I'm not offended, but I'm concerned for you, for your sake. I'm really concerned. Because when a person is constantly offended by the preacher, the problem often is not the preacher. The problem is the message. The problem is that we need to learn how to follow him. Now you criticize John the Baptist because he's not fun. You criticize Jesus because he's too much fun. Because he was too much fun. It was fun to be around him. <clears throat> I mean, what more fun can you have than all the Pharisees there and he's saying, you hypocrites! And the guys just... Oh. Lots of fun. They had lots of fun with Jesus. Did they? He was a funny person. He did funny things. Now, criticism of the messenger is really a, a, a problem with the message, not with the messenger. People say that church is interested in money. Or people go to church and say we're all hypocrites. Most recently it's not safe to go because all priests are child molesters. <laughs> you 
yeah. And and now uh, another one is all all the temporary partners are homosexuals. And all these things. So it, that's not true. That's not true. Most priests are men of God. They're probably in the wrong church, but they're men of God. Most uh, Anglican pastors are men and women of God. Again, uh, my opinion, they should come to a Pentecostal church. <laughs> but that's their call. But the world talks about this thing. It's so, oh, it's not safe. Kids in church? No, it's not safe. Well, here it's pretty safe. I'm telling you. And we try to have a safe environment. But most likely, if you're shooting at the messenger, the problem is the message. Now today I'm going to finish by telling you the message of the gospel. Jesus came to reconcile man to God. And he came to give his life, paying the price of a ransom for your life. He loves you so much. It's not about religion, it's about God. God loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son to die for you and your sins. That's the message of the gospel. This is what we preach. That all things that we add to them are a consequence of living together in church. But uh, today, he's giving you a present. It's called salvation. And you have no excuse to reject his compassion. You have no excuse. Sometimes you can feel condemned because the burden of sin is condemning us. But God is here to forgive you and forgive you completely. And finally, he wants also to give you his Holy Spirit. And with his power, his Holy Spirit, then you're able to discern if something is from God or if it's not from God. When you come to church, you will listen to people preaching the gospel. People make mistakes. We're human. Pastors are human, just like you. Our kids are just like yours. We are alive just like you. We have to separate ourselves to seek the Lord and to convey the message that we know is the message for the church. This is the message you have to listen to today. And what God wants to do with your life is far greater than rules and regulations. It's far greater than coming to church. Coming to church is part of our life. But our Christian life is not here. It's out there. Who we are in Christ is not seen here. It's in your home. In, in, in your house. You know, and, and if you manifest the glory of God, even if your children are not walking with God, if you stay, if you remain in your holiness, living a separated life, which is not lasting, your kids will want to have your God. But if they detect hypocrisy in you, if they detect a hint of hypocrisy, man, you'll be attacked by your beliefs like you've never seen before. Now, if your kids are not in church because of past hypocrisy, repent today. Determine, I'm not going to be a hypocrite. I'm going to show the love of God to my children. I'm going to show the love of God to my family. That's what a Christian is. It's not the person you are here, it's the person you are outside. So what you do when you're confronted with choices, and you make the right choice, and, and, and sometimes you can be in politics and you say, Listen, I, I really love the ideology of my body, but I cannot go for abortion. It's when you are confronted with these things that you show that you are a Christian. Not because you carry a Bible, not because you say you're a member of this church, but because you're Christ-like. Christ was very radical. He was a radical man. Well, talk about being radical. He was, he was telling you, leave all the nets and follow me. That's radical. He would say, if you don't eat of my flesh, you don't drink of my blood, you're doomed, you're dead. You will not have life. Well, everybody left. Then he tells the disciples, what about you folks? You want to leave me too? And they said, we cannot go. Why? Because you have the words of life. Amen. You have the word of life. You have the words that refresh us. And I mean, Jesus rebuked them all the time. One of his best friends, Peter, he looked at him in the eye and said, Get behind me, Satan! I wonder if a pastor will go to you and say, Get behind me, Satan! He said, I live in our church. Why do they leave Jesus? Because they acknowledge He is the Son of God. Amen. I will not leave Jesus because of what people say. I will not leave Jesus 
Nothing can separate me from the love of God. Nothing can separate me. Let me just say it again. I know the service today was a bit longer than uh, usual. And in order to tune to the gospel, this is the message of the gospel. God came to pay the price for your sin. We need to, uh, to learn that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, saved us. But He wants to give us more. He wants to give us His Holy Spirit. And today, even though we didn't talk about these things in detail, I know that God wants to baptize people with the Holy Spirit.